Hello, I'm Jonathan Kay from the University of Massachusetts Medical School in Worcester. I'm reporting to you from ACR Convergence 2020, which means that I'm in my office at home and I'm looking at my computer. And I'm going to talk today about a very interesting abstract that was presented in the first plenary session. Today is Friday. And this was an abstract about hydroxychloroquine use and QT interval prolongation in patients with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. This was presented by Elizabeth Park, a third year fellow from Columbia University Medical Center who worked with colleagues, John Giles, Joan Bathon, and Laura Geraldino, as well as several others. Uh, the study looked at uh, QT interval prolongation as a result of the COVID-19 data, which suggested that patients with COVID-19 treated with the combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin had QT interval prolongation. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis patients have been treated with hydroxychloroquine for decades, as have patients with systemic lupus erythematosus. So Dr. Park and her colleagues looked at two rheumatoid arthritis cohorts, one that had been established at Johns Hopkins Arthritis Center when uh, John Giles and Joan Bathon were there, uh, and then a second cohort that they established at Columbia University Medical Center when they arrived in 2011. They also looked at a cohort of patients with lupus uh, that had been evaluated uh, with EKG screening at Columbia University Medical Center between 2015 and 2019. All patients met ACR classification criteria, either for rheumatoid arthritis or for systemic lupus erythematosus, and patients were excluded if they had a physician-diagnosed cardiovascular event or procedure for rheumatoid arthritis or self or physician-diagnosed cardiovascular event or procedure for patients with lupus. Hydroxychloroquine use or non-use was assessed at the time that they had an electrocardiogram, uh, and they assessed variables related to cardiovascular disease as well as to rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, and uh, also assessed whether they were taking concomitant medications that might prolong the QT interval. The primary outcome was the corrected continuous QT interval length uh, with lengths of 440 or 500 milliseconds or longer uh, being categorical cutoffs. And they performed multivariable analysis to look for associated covariates that might be contributing to this effect. The two groups, uh, there were 371 patients between the two uh, diseases who were taking hydroxychloroquine and 159 patients who were not taking hydroxychloroquine. Uh, the groups were relatively comparable, although hydroxychloroquine patients were treated, hydroxychloroquine treated patients were about 10 years younger uh, than the patients who were not taking hydroxychloroquine. And they were also more likely uh, to be uh, taking uh, corticosteroids or statins or low-dose aspirin. The patients who were taking hydroxychloroquine had a lower prevalence of QT corrected interval prolongation than those who were not taking hydroxychloroquine. Uh, the patients uh, who were taking hydroxychloroquine, uh, a lower proportion were also taking antidepressants, a lower proportion were also taking muscle relaxants. When they looked at the corrected QT interval, the unadjusted QT interval was higher for patients not on hydroxychloroquine compared to those taking hydroxychloroquine. However, when adjusted for age, race, current prednisone use, hypertension, current smoking, diabetes, aspirin use, and antimicrobial use, uh, this difference in QT corrected interval disappeared and the two groups had comparable adjusted QT corrected intervals. When they looked at clinical characteristics that might be associated with QT uh, interval length, uh, they found that age, current prednisone use, and current smoking were associated with QT interval prolongation. Of the groups, the patients uh, with rheumatoid arthritis, there were 39 patients who had QT prolongation of 500 milliseconds or longer 
and 11 of the lupus patients had similar prolongation of the corrected QT interval. However, uh, there were uh, only nine of the 11 lupus patients and four of the 39 rheumatoid arthritis patients with QT corrected interval prolongation were hydroxychloroquine users. Uh, therefore, they could not ascertain any statistically significant differences between users and non-users of hydroxychloroquine. Uh, the conclusion of this study was that they found uh, corrected QT interval prolongation in a small number of patients taking hydroxychloroquine, but there were no arrhythmic episodes or associated deaths among the lupus patients. Uh, there was no QT corrected interval prolongation observed in those using hydroxychloroquine in combination with other QT uh, interval prolonging medications. Uh, and only in the lupus cohort did they find a significant interaction between hydroxychloroquine use and antipsychotic medication use. So uh, this study is a very well done epidemiologic study in established cohorts that found no association between corrected QT interval length and hydroxychloroquine use, at least in patients uh, with rheumatoid arthritis or lupus not taking azithromycin. Uh, this study provides evidence to support the relative cardiovascular safety of hydroxychloroquine uh, in patients with rheumatoid arthritis and patients with lupus and helps to dispel the fear of this complication that was observed in patients with COVID-19 treated with high doses of hydroxychloroquine in combination with azithromycin. This was a terrific presentation by a third year rheumatology fellow with great mentorship from the group at Columbia, John Giles, uh, Joan Bathon, and Laura Geraldino. I congratulate and commend her on her plenary presentation today. Uh, and for more information about this and other presentations at ACR Convergence, uh, please tune into Room Now. Uh, a number of my colleagues are tweeting on a regular basis, and we'll be filming additional videos uh, with panel discussions, interviews, and other reports from ACR Convergence. Thanks, and I look forward to seeing you again on Room Now. I'm Jonathan Kay.